Good morning, guys. Look at this. As far as you can see, leaves off the trees. All around us, even down to Georgina. Which is uh, quite amazing, isn't it, really? Um, sometimes it feels to me like all of the seasons are just colliding. Um, there are no demarcation lines anymore. Almost as if it's all happening. 8.50 and, uh, for goodness sake, 8.50 and it's Monday. Almost as if everything is happening all at once, simultaneously. Um, the movie that we believe to be time, um, simply because all of the moments are speeded up and played one after the other, are uh, converging and we can stand in autumn whilst in summer and winter whilst in spring and even winter whilst in summer. I see, I wonder if that's a real bird or if that's a watcher or a watcher of the watchers, I don't know. It's, um, time is crazy at the moment, I think. Uh, maybe trying to show us that w why would we believe in in time it's it's so totally abstract um it means different things to different people has no meaning in some um in some cultures um why is it that some people are in time and some people are through time and why is it that you can change from one to the other? And why do we need time? Well, of course, time really, in this country anyway, um, became incredibly important with the industrial age because uh, the machines needed to be turned on at a specific time and kept running um, until the task was completed. So uh, time took on a new identity and a new meaning and became, instead of something to enjoy or to spend, became something that had a <clears throat> per hour sign on it. And although the leaves are falling, the fruit are not even ripened yet, look. Bonkers, chestnuts. I don't know, it's all gone a bit crazy. And um, things are changing. Things are changing. Um, there's a lot in the news at the moment. Positive stuff, really, about, um, you know, this roller coaster ride is a pulled into the station from Gary Larrabee, um, someone I subscribe to, and I think he gets it as a quote from somebody else. Um, and the signs everywhere are kind of telling us that things are about to change, and, uh, well, they're not about to change. It's been an awful bloody long process. But for some people, for, for others, it'll be, what? What does it need to change for? Everything's perfect the way it is. Um, and, and their thoughts are as valuable as our own. Each, each idea, each contemplation, each unique individual will probably have a completely different way of uh, looking at change or the need for change. Uh, some will see this as, you know, perfection. They will believe there is no such thing as slavery that everybody has an equal chance and an equal opportunity um, and that really it's down to <clears throat> your own beliefs and motivations. And can we actually say that that's wrong? 
uh, do we say, well, you know what, that isn't right because some people don't get and some people... But there comes a point when you can argue with others um, till you're blue in the face, whatever that means. Is it blue in the face or green in the face? I have no idea. Until you're some colour in the face, anyway. And um, people aren't going to budge. Anyway, I've been thinking to myself about um, making my own world happy and um, if we all, you know, there's so many of us here who are going on about universes and who are going on about uh, we need to change <clears throat> this, this isn't right, you know, this is unfair, this is whatever. And we get passionate about it, sometimes angry about it. But one thing that seems to be a common theme is that many of us cannot discuss it with our loved ones. Or our loved ones don't buy into it or aren't interested. Um, and sometimes that can cause... Um, uh, I'm not going to do that. Sometimes this can cause um, fractures and breaks within within families, and the fractures and breaks are at the closest of levels. So it can mean that uh, husbands disagree with wives, or vice versa, or mothers um, tell children, "Oh, don't be silly." That isn't going to happen or other people have their religion to hold on to so they will say no no God would never allow that um, but this is within families and uh, you know I had a a week of I don't know what to call it really um, illumination I'm not sure. Um, but I guess the thing is that I realised here am I. Oh, bless. Oh, dear. But, um, you know, here am I wanting to rid the world of chemtrails, to want to rid the world of a financial system, to uh, want to share out the world resources, be fair, to be giving and, and you know sometimes I think it's such hypocrisy um, because I have fractures and breaks in my own family. Look at the leaves, see? starting to change do you understand what I mean I mean I have sisters I don't talk to brothers I don't talk to I'm one of six children who all went to bed together once upon a time and listened to uh, once upon a time and happy ever after um, and we don't speak to each other <clears throat> oh, well they all speak to each other it's me that doesn't um, do you know what I mean and then I have breaks in my own family. I mean, my own daughter and I um, didn't sit down together and talk for five years after her daughter died. You know, five years, three of the children had been born to her in, in that space of time that I never got to see until last year. Um, you know, there's so many of us who are kind of saying this needs to be stopped we need to do this we need to change the world we need to change the world and and what became so apparent to me in that week was that my family and from that I mean if I'm in the central point of my experience and we just have a few 
and people close to me kind of orbiting, if you like. Um, I, I haven't even got my own uh, universe sorted out. You know, and, and the thing that gets me is I wonder how many of us actually have. You know, it's, um, it's kind of weird. And <clears throat> I thought to myself, you know, when I had the children and everything and we were building dens, we were having fun, we were laughing and joking and we were being limitless possibility. You know, one moment, um, oh, I was a, um, an owner of uh, Aldi, believe it or not. That's the job that I was given. And um, Summer was a very famous doctor who saved lots of lives every day. And Shania had this cafe. And the thing is that while we were in those roles, uh, we were really in those roles. You know, we have limitless possibility. We can make believe and we can create. We can believe and we can be. We can think and imagine and we can do. Um, and it's all play. You know, no one gets really hurt. No one in my, where I'm a manager of a supermarket, um, complains about bad working hours or you know, doesn't enjoy their job. And uh, Summer never talked about um, losing <coughs> lives. She just talked about how magnificent um, her skills were at saving lives. And uh, of course, Shania, who was the chef and cafe owner, well, we got the last remaining table, you know? And it was real, and their demeanours changed, and they raised up their heads, and and so did I. And for those <coughs> moments, <coughs> um, the three of us were in Blissland, because everything was cool and dandy and we were sitting down with our peers and we were talking about uh, our lives, our successes, where we'd been on holiday, oh, places I've never been to. I mean Shania went somewhere where there were baby dragons. I mean, you know, I hope you get what I'm saying guys. Um, I need to get my own little universe right. Do you know what I mean? Uh, who are we that we think we can change the beliefs of billions of people? Um, who are we that we can look at others and say, what you're doing is wrong. Uh, what you're doing is unjust when we can't even really put things right in our own families. And I was thinking about how happiness, um, <clears throat> it radiates out from within. I mean, all this is proven and can be shown scientifically um, because there are people who actually have to have the show me, show me, I don't believe you. And probably all of that has come from from parents, really. You know, show me your hands, let me see. What you're hiding behind your back, turn around. You know, all of this kind of stuff when, uh, I don't know, parents are kind of blaming you for something that you haven't actually done and it's, you know, you've got to show everything. Yet these same people complain if they go to the airport and they're put through a scanner. Uh, <sighs> This is what I'm kind of feeling at the moment, is that it's, it's about our own universes. And sometimes we are so locked into it uh, that we can't step outside of it. And it takes you to step outside. It takes you to actually watch yourself being you. And, and being you in many different guises. Because believe me, 
There is a different you for every single relationship you have. Even a relationship where you walk into a shop and you don't know the person who's serving you. There is an expectation and there is a you that um, takes control in that situation. You understand what I mean? So, you know, um, you're not going to be shortchanged. You're going to expect a specific service and uh, you want your requirements met because you've walked into that shop which advertises that they can service your requirements. Um, and we know that we can do this. We know that we can do these roles. We know that we can be whoever we want to be because if one human being can do it, then any other human being can do it. That is a tenant of NLP, that nobody is broken. And that if one person can do a handstand, then so can every other person on this planet. Every other physical being that has um, the same physical uh, body as the person doing it. Now, that doesn't mean it's got to be um, perfect like that. I'm merely saying um, that the person has probably two arms, two legs, two eyes if you get what I'm saying. Uh, and we, we watch actors on telly. We, we act ourselves constantly. That is what we're doing. We're acting. We're playing a role. We're being who we think we need to be in that moment to get whatever it is we want to get or to explain what it is we want to explain or to experience what we want to experience. <clears throat> now I just think it's time. Maybe it's just time for me. I don't know. Um, but I've been thinking, you know, we in our families, we are the centre of our, our universe and we need to, well maybe you don't, maybe it's me. I need to understand that and to understand that there's all of these people orbiting around me, um, dancing with me and I need to get that into balance because there's too many of us who are mm, talking and not walking and uh, do you understand what I'm saying not putting it right in our own in our own uh, point of existence and uh, I want to rectify that I want to know that everybody who's in my universe because initially it would it's me then it's you know my mother and my partner and my children but then it's their children their friends you understand and so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it has to become the world everybody on the world and then it has to be every every being in the universe the multiverse but it has to start with us you know remember those little tops uh, they weren't even tops, they five stones. I don't know if you've ever played that. With the little metal jacks. You know, we need to spin those jacks. And as you spin it, you will see that it, it moves. And when two, if there's two of them spinning, you can watch them kind of dance and pull from each other and they get closer together. And, you know, sometimes they'll collide and... They'll knock each other down and then one will spin back up again. And it's quite amazing. It's quite incredible and amazing when you watch those um, jacks spinning around. But we're like those jacks, every one of us. And those people around us are like jacks. And we've got to get that in balance. You know what I mean? And and if if each of us do that, if each of us, focus on ourselves as the center of the universe 
and uh, everything else, the grass, the, the trees, the animals, the insects, the birds, the bees, the, the whole lot. It, it'll change, I'm sure. I believe it will. So, yeah, I'm going to keep focusing on, obviously I'm still going to notice all this stuff. Because once your eyes are open, have <laughs> been open to it, you can't close them to it again. I do know that to be a fact. Because I've tried, I've tried to shut my eyes to it. I've tried not to look up to the sky. I've tried to turn off the TV. Well, I didn't. I actually did turn off the TV for years. Um, I tried not to notice newspaper headlines. <sighs> but the thing is, awareness is everything. And it starts from your own centre. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. So uh, keep looking up. I think we're going to have another storm today, uh, which I'm quite glad about. Um, it's been beautiful having my stuff back. I really, really missed his energy this time. And he felt exactly the same normally. You know, he can go for three weeks and he it seems as if he's always here with me. I don't miss him. Uh, but this time I really did miss him. Um, and it was so good to have him back. It just... And... My little world... Is... Uh, is lovely. I'm so happy... With my little world. And my dreams and ideals and everything. About having more, more, more. Um, and helping... All these other people are beginning to sound rather stupid and uh, slightly arrogant. Um, I never did like anybody doing up my shoelaces. I always wanted to do them myself. Yet here am I saying, come on, line up, put your shoes there. Let me do them for you. Um... Anyway, um, remember to enjoy life, live it. It is exactly why we are here. And, uh, yeah, time may be if every single one of us focused on our own universe and our own centre, uh, that that happiness and joy would soon fill this planet. And uh, I do believe in critical mass. Okay, I'm off. I love you all. Uh, keep looking up. And, um, yeah. I love you. So from Honey and Abby, eating the rest of the bird food, I'll put some down before I go. And uh, my feet. And the Tree Museum. It's goodbye. Bye. Bye.